All right, welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick for this week's breakout watch list sponsored by MarketSmith. In today's video, I'll be covering 10 stocks that have been showing the best relative strength while the market's been volatile. We'll use MarketSmith to break down the stock's fundamentals, group strength, fund ownership, and other trading statistics, and then we'll jump to the chart to find our potential entry point. If you guys enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. We're trying to hit 6,000 before the end of the year, and we're so close. And quick disclaimer before we start, this is not stock or financial advice. Please do your own due diligence before trading. Trading comes with financial risk. With that said, let's get into the charts starting now. First, we have ATKR. It's got an A-plus group strength rating. It's in building construction, which is the 16th strongest group right now out of 197 groups in the market. Within that very strong group of 41 stocks, this is number one on earnings per share, number, number one on relative strength, nine on accumulation distribution, and uh, the fourth strongest stock on a composite basis. It has a relative strength rating of 98, composite rating of 98, Whenever both of those categories are in the 90s, it's a stock that I want to have on at least a general watch list so I know uh, how it's trending. It's got an accumulation rating, B+, that's very strong. Taking a look at the fundamentals, earnings per share up 100%, 182, 491, and 272 year over year. That's extremely strong. That's why it has that 99 earnings per share rating. Uh, sales up 14, 40, 122, and 93 year over year. And after tax profit margin improving, 18, 21, 22, and 22%. Taking a look at fund ownership, we want to see this increasing. We want big money flowing into the stock, not liquidating positions. And you can see over the last two years, fund ownership has been increasing uh, from September of 2020 from 434 to 610 this September. Looking at the chart, you can see that the moving averages are all in an uptrend and they're all in the right order. We have the 200 day, the 50, the 20, and the eight. We did have a pretty nice move here, uh, October to November, about 38%. And then from there, we've pulled back, and this 20-day moving average, you can use the 21 EMA, whatever you'd like, the, the midterm kind of moving average has been providing support along the way from the pullback, one, two, three, four, five, and then on Friday, six times, buyers stepping in right around that line. This is still a little bit loose of a chart. Um, I would like the daily bars to tighten up. You can see this with the ATR, average true range here, is just starting to get a little bit lower. Uh, ideally, that tightens up so we don't get stopped out on the just normal volatility of the day uh, when we use a tighter stop, 3%, 5%, something like that. Um, potential entry point could be a break over Friday's high, 111.95. Call it 112, a nice round number. Over that, uh, over that area, you'd also get over the main part of this volume shelf, so less resistance up top for ATKR. Next, we have AVGO, and this happens to be in the number one strongest group in the market, so it has an A-plus group strength rating in semiconductors. Uh, within that group of 31 stocks, it's only the 13th strongest on a relative strength basis, but it has a relative strength of 95. That just shows you how strong the group is right now. Uh, within the group, it's also kind of midway on a composite basis, 15 out of 31, but again, composite rating, 96. Relative strength rating, 95, a stock that I want to have on my radar. Accumulation distribution, B rating, ideally that would be a little bit higher. Um, Taking a look at earnings, we were up 26, 29, 29, and 23 year over year. So four quarters over 20, it's pretty solid. Sales up 14, 15, 16, 15, and after tax profit margin, this is what's really improving. 45%, 45%, 46%, and 47%. Fund ownership on this uh, is also steadily increasing from 20, 25, 39 to 28, 50 this September. AVGO just had earnings after the close on Thursday. We gapped up on heavy volume on Friday. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of growth stocks pulled back on Friday. I know Apple kept pushing forward. The indexes kept pushing forward. This did squat just a little bit, but uh, what we're looking for is a couple days of sideways trading um, or just taking out the closing price of 631.68 as a potential entry point. Depending on how you like to trade these, I know not many people or not everyone likes to trade these uh, earning gappers, but a break over the close if we open lower and then take that out would be a potential entry point you can manage risk against the low that would be two percent risk uh, that's what i'm looking at but you don't have to do what i'm i'm doing avgo next we have cdns this is in computer software design 22nd strongest group out of 197 that's an a group strength rating within the group of 12 stocks this is the third strongest on relative strength and number two on composite basis has a relative strength rating of 94. We're always looking for stocks at least 85 or higher, unless it's an IPO, that's a different category. Um, but composite rating 94, relative strength rating 94, both 90s, that's great. Accumulation distribution, C minus, that's on the lower end. Um, taking a look at earnings, up 54, 38, 30, and 14. So we are improving earnings, but at a decelerating pace. It's kind of a yellow flag. 
Sales up 27, 19, 14, and 13. So the same story with sales. And after tax profit margin, 31, 31, 32, and uh, 30. Taking a look at fund ownership, um, that is actually decreasing from September or from June to September from 2277 to 2258. Um, but otherwise, uh, kind of steady around uh, September's numbers. You can see that this had a nice run up about 60% from April or May in here. Uh, since then, the market has been volatile. So these daily bars being wider and wider, it's not ideal. You can see ATR really picking up here, but that's what the volatility in the market was showing. So when the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, those were coming back to the 50 day moving average, this was kind of bouncing between the, the 20 day and the 50 day, never even touching the 50 day, showing a, a bit more relative uh, strength. Since it's also in a strong group and now we start tightening up here, ATR now is declining. Um, now it, it's a stock that I want to put on my radar. It's at basically the, the top part of this volume shelf. So little resistance up top. I'd be looking for a break over Thursday's high, 168, 186 as a potential entry point for CDNS. Next we have GDYN. This has been on my watch list for many, many weeks now, and it's still kind of just trading sideways, which is nice. Uh, it's in computer tech services, 25th strongest group out of 197. That's an A group rating. Within the group of 52 stocks, it's number one on relative strength and number one on composite. Uh, 99 relative strength, 99 composite rating, doesn't get any better than that. Accumulation distribution could be a little bit, could uh, use a little bit more work, B minus rating right now. Um, earnings, we turned it around, we were at minus 75, then zero, then plus 900, plus 120. Sales went from minus six to plus 21, plus 113 and 120. So we have acceleration of sales. And after tax profit margin up seven, seven, or seven, eight, uh, 13, and 14. Fund ownership on this has been increasing. We went from 31 funds in December of 19 to 230 uh, in September of 2021. This is another stock that popped on earnings, and I've traded this a couple times, getting stopped at even. Every time it, it gets going, it pulls right back. Um, so we're really looking for this ATR to come in a little bit more. It's, it's staying steady. The volatility in the market is still high but you're seeing a lot of these, these wicks. So what this tells me is when I get into this trade, if I'm going to trade this again, I wanna be taking at least partial positions off into these areas where sellers have been showing up around $41. Uh, so if we do get in at a lower price and then it gets up to $41, I wanna be locking in some profit at that point and then moving my stop up so I don't get chopped up for uh, a loss. I'd rather sell some into strength and then move my stop to even, especially in this environment. Not many stocks are working. We're trying to move that stop loss up to even as quickly as possible. Um, but with this, because we closed just above the eight day exponential moving average, a uh, potential break over Friday's high, 40.15 as an entry point. Ideally, this trades down to the right a little bit to start the week, and then we get a lower entry point. So we have a little bit of a profit cushion that we're selling into strength uh, in this upper wick here for GDYN. Next we have INTU, and this was my main focus on Friday. Uh, never bought the stock, but it's, it's really shaping up nicely. Uh, it's got an A minus group strength rating in computer software financials, 47th strongest group out of 197. Within the group of 39 stocks, it's number one on relative strength, number one on composite. You see a trend with the stocks that I'm looking at. I want strong groups, strong stocks in those groups. It increases the probability of the trade. It's got a 96 relative strength rating, a 97 composite rating, B minus accumulation distribution. Uh, earnings per share flipped it from minus 41 to plus 35, plus nine and plus 63 year over year. Sales minus seven, 39, plus, minus seven, plus 39, plus 41 and plus 52. And after tax profit margin improving 12, 40, 20 and 21. Uh, fund ownership also increasing from 26.95 in September of 2020 to 32, 36 this September. INTU had a really nice run up here, about 38%. <clears throat> These daily bars got wide, again, with the market volatility, that makes sense. Um, but instead of finding support at the 50-day moving average, this found support at the 20-day moving average. So finding support at a shorter duration moving average while the market's pulling back is a sign of relative strength, which is good. Um, we did bounce on Tuesday, like everything else, traded sideways. Uh, and then we closed really well on Friday, right near the high of the day and right by this volume shelf here. I'm looking for a break over Thursday's high, 680.25 as a potential entry point. We're halfway through the video, so if you guys are enjoying it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I do this breakout watch list every Sunday and then go live on Tuesday night. With that said, let's get into MU. 
The stock is in computer data storage, 57th strongest group out of 197. That's a B plus group strength rating. Ideally, we would look for A and A plus groups, but B plus isn't bad. Uh, within the group of 10 stocks, it's sixth on relative strength, 80 uh, relative strength. We'll get to that once we get to the chart. Um, and number three on composite rating. It does have a composite rating of 97, which is very, very strong. Um, accumulation distribution, A, which is nice. Uh, earnings per share up 63, 118, 129, and 124. That's incredible. Sales up 12, 30, 36, and 37. And after-tax profit margin, 16, 18, 29, and 34% year-over-year growth. Fund ownership on this uh, did drop in from June to September, went from uh, 2881 down to 2693. We did see heavy volume breakout here. So chances are funds did uh, start acquiring positions late November. Uh, yeah, late November. And did want to point out, Mark Smith shows this really well. Earnings per share is due in eight days. If you don't trade stocks eight days before earnings, then this is just one you don't have on your radar. Uh, eight days is kind of right on that that level where I might trade it, but if I don't have a large profit, 10% or more going into earnings, I'm not going to hold it into earnings. So treating this more as a swing trade possibility. So MEU completely fell out of favor uh, from April down to the low in, I think it was September, 32%, which, I mean, this looks bad on the chart, but a 32% pullback, a lot of growth stocks are going through much worse. Um, and this was nice and orderly. It found a bottom and then we gapped up heavy volume coming through, and this kind of action is all over the place, not ideal, but that, that's kind of how the market was. We gap down, we gap back up, and it's still above the eight day exponential moving average, above the 20 day. Ideally, when I'm trading, I want the 50 day over the 200 day, so that is a yellow flag, uh, decreasing the probability on this trade, um, but it's just one thing, one thing to look at. Uh, with this, I wanted to trade sideways um, for a day or two, not too many because we do have earnings coming up here, um, but then a break over Friday's high, 84.13 is, or sorry, 85.68 as a potential entry point right through here. Um, and a stop at the low of that day is 1.8%. That's kind of how I've been trading lately in the market. So that's what I would be looking for. I know a lot of people like to use the 5%, 7% stops. And with that, especially going into earnings, I don't think this is the stock to play that. Just being honest, MU. Next, we have NVT. It's in electrical power, which is the 45th strongest group out of 197. A minus group strength rating within the stock, within the group of 36 stocks. Number six on relative strength, number three on composite. It's got a 92 relative strength, 93 composite rating, all good there. B plus accumulation distribution. Uh, earnings per share went from minus nine to plus 26, plus 72 to plus 18. After tax, or sorry, sales minus eight, plus five, plus 34, plus 26, and after tax profit margin improving, 14, 13, 14, 14. Fund ownership on this has been increasing, going from 548 in September of 2020 to 642 this September. NVT had a nice move on earnings, moving up about 17%. It's not the fastest moving stock in, in the market, so if that's not what you trade, that's not what you trade. But pulled back to the eight day, bounced, and then with the market, it did roll over. Similar to the market, not showing as much relative strength as the other stocks, but um, found support a little bit above the 50-day moving average. Did take out that low, so shook out all the traders that were buying in the pullback here. Since then, we gapped up on Tuesday, similar to many other stocks, traded sideways and closed the end of the day uh, right near the high. This kind of action kind of looks like what the S&P 500 is doing. Um, but we're looking for a break over Friday. Friday's high, 3801 as a potential entry point and then a stop maybe under the 20-day uh, moving average, 3.6% risk there for NVT. Next, we have ON Semiconductor. Semiconductors are very strong right now. This is in the 10th strongest group out of 197, A-plus group strength rating. Within the group of 40 stocks, it's number one on relative strength and number one on a composite basis. It's got a relative strength of 98, composite rating of 99, an A accumulation distribution, checking all the boxes. Uh, earnings per share, 17, 250, 425, and 222 year over year. Sales up 3, 16, 38, and 32. And after tax profit margin, 10, 10, 17, and 22. Fund ownership on this has been increasing as well from basically 1,000 in September of 2020 to 1414 this September. This is a stock that I traded last week. Uh, after Monday's shakeout, I bought with a break over Monday's high on Tuesday. It got out. And then when we came back on Tuesday, this was a good move. This was 4.5%. I didn't want to take that winner and turn it into a loser. So I got stopped out as it came back here. 
It looked like that was the right move on Thursday as we moved lower. And then on Friday, we recaptured that. Uh, it's really respecting this eight day EMA lately and kind of building up off of that, showing great relative strength in the market. Um, we're looking for just a break over Friday's high, 65.45. Ideally, if we do open lower on Monday, um, tighten up this range. You can see ATR just starting to, to tighten up. That's the volatility with the market. It's still a low probability trading environment un until something shifts here. Um, but with that said, this has been showing great relative strength. We covered all the fundamentals, all A+, uh, checking all the boxes here. So we wanna find our way back into the stock uh, somehow with ON. Next we have Snowflake, S-N-O-W. This is in computer software, which is the 63rd strongest group out of 197. It's a B plus group strength rating, um, but in that group, let's see, out of 120 stocks, it's number 10 on relative strength and 28 on composite rating. It's got a relative strength of 98, 93, excuse me. Uh, composite rating 67, not as strong, um, and B minus accumulation distribution. This did IPO uh, September of last year, so we're still kind of working our way through the IPO base. Earnings per share uh, have been negative, so that's what contributes to that uh, 67 composite rating. Sales went uh, 117, 110, 104, 110, so good sales numbers. Uh, but after tax profit margin, pretty abysmal, uh, still trying to work on profitability. Minus 105, minus 89, minus 70, minus 46. So we are decelerating how bad profit margins are. So ideally, uh, in a couple quarters, we flip that. Fund ownership on this, again, this did IPO last year, so we went from 597 to 1191. Fund, fund ownership is increasing uh, throughout this base, which is nice to see. This was a super weird chart uh, going into kind of this correction area because we slashed down, slashed down, slashed down, well under the 50-day moving average, and then earnings happened, and we popped and closed up 16% on that day, traded down with the market, popped on Tuesday, and then tightened up throughout the rest of the week. So we're working with Friday's high as a potential entry point, uh, 374.72. We got the eight day under the 20 day. Again, we want to see the 200, the 50, 20, and the eight all in the right order, all in uptrends that increases the probability of the trades. So the fact that the eight day is under the 20 day, that is um, it's kind of taking back some probability from our trade, not the ideal situation, but with this kind of action, that's what you expect. We are above the main part of the volume shelf here, so there is less resistance up top, which is nice to see, and some support on the bottom. So a break over Friday's high and a stop under Friday's low is only 3.6%. Maybe use Thursday's low, 4.5%, to give you a little bit more cushion on that move. Uh, that's what I'm looking at with SNOW Snowflake. And last stock that I got for you guys, SWIM. This is in building construction, which is the 16th strongest group out of 197. That's an A-plus group strength rating. Within the group of 41 stocks, it's 21st on relative strength. This just did IPO. This goes back to IPOs showing relative strength. It's a little bit different with MarketSmith. Um, and composite rating, 24 out of 41. So uh, 78 relative strength rating, 78 composite rating, uh, A minus accumulation distribution, which is good, showing good volume on these updates recently. Uh, earnings negative and then plus 154 and then back to negative. Sales up 41, 191, 60, and 27. And after tax profit margin, kind of figuring it out, minus two, plus six, minus 30, minus seven, all over the map there. Fund ownership on this did decrease from June to September, but after this earnings, we did have a heavy volume breakout and a heavy volume move out of that uh, kind of consolidated area. All of this happened after September's numbers, so chances are September's fund, or December's fund ownership will improve from this number. So like I said, on earnings, this had a heavy volume breakout here, uh, about 21% move, got some post, uh, post earnings drift up 46%, then we consolidated against that eight day EMA, had a nice shakeout and then moved higher again. And now we're consolidating again, eight day, 20 day coming up. Um, this does have uh, a little bit of a volume shelf overhead here. So this is not one that I wanna take right away on Monday unless we get over this area, but I'm looking at, uh, is this Wednesday's high? Yeah, Wednesday's high, 26, 24. I know that's a little bit extended from where we're at right now, but I would rather wait, let the stock kind of prove that it's strong, not just a couple buyers coming in here and here. Um, and if we get over that volume shelf, less resistance up top, increasing the probability of the trade. So 
We're looking at Tuesday's high, 26.24 as potential entry point for SWIM. All right, that's gonna be the breakout watch list of the week. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We are so close to 6,000. That's the goal for the end of the year. So if you enjoy swing trading or just trading in general, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday night for another live stream. Take care.